Hey, what's up, guys? I'm Nick Acosta, and I just want to invite you guys to grow with me as I grow with God um, in truth um, and in the things of the spirit. Amen. So I, I'm just in my office and, you know, I was working on some things and then I started to look around and see some books I have and uh, started to wonder, you know, what I'm going to um, look at next and study next and things like that. Um, just to, you know, pass the time learning, studying. Um, and I started thinking about, you know, just that studying. Um, and, and I had some questions um, about about knowledge, the knowledge that that we desire. Um, for myself and also for for some of you guys who might be watching. So I had a question. Um, why do we want knowledge? You know, why do we want knowledge? You know, um, can we ask ourselves that? You know, hey, why do you want knowledge? Hey, Nick, why do you want knowledge? Um, what kind of knowledge do you want? You know, once we turn, once we determine if we want knowledge or not, or not, um, and we determine what ki what kind of knowledge do we want, and we can think about why do we want it, right? Um, what do we plan on doing with our knowledge? What do we plan on doing with it? What's the purpose of getting it, right? Because we might have a reason for why we want it and what kind of knowledge we want, but it's a whole nother question to ask. What we're going to do once we attain it, once that's knowledge that we have, you know, embedded in our minds, in our memory, in our brains, and, and, and we remember it and it's, you know, it's, it's fixated, it's, it's, it's fixed into our minds and, and we can think about it and we can, you know, articulate it properly and eloquently and we can talk about it. Um, what else? You know, what What else other than knowing something? What is the point of the knowledge that we want? You know, what kind of knowledge is it? Why do we want it? And what are we going to do with it once we have it? You know, and it brings me to uh, Ephesians 2.20. I'm sorry, Ephesians and <laughs> 220. Well, you know, I was on 220. Ephesians 4, 11. And it's talking about the apostles and the prophets, the teachers, evangelists, pastors. Um, and it says, and he himself, Jesus, gave some to be apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, and some pastors and teachers. And it says, for the equipping of the saints, for the work of ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ. Till we all come to the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God. Do we do we want the knowledge of the Son of God? Does that answer our question? And why do we want it? Well, right here, the Lord wants us to be equipped. The Lord wants us to have knowledge, to have understanding of something, right? For, for what purpose? Ephesians 4, 11 and 12 says that it's for the equipping of the saints. Well, once we're equipped with something, what are we going to use it for? What are we going to do with it? Does, does the knowledge that we want in, involve talking about it? Or does it involve doing something with it? Because right here in Ephesians 4.12, it says, for the equipping of the saints, for the work of ministry. We are to be equipped for the work of of ministry. So we ought to be working something, doing something. And it says ministry, some type of ministry. It doesn't have to be the exact same ministry as me, you know, but some type of ministry, you know, uh, ministry means service to minister means to serve, to freely give what you have freely reserved, uh, uh, received, right? To freely give what you have freely received. So to, to minister means to serve. So as the saints who are equipped with some type of knowledge, guys, we're supposed to be using it and giving it out in a way that serves somebody. That serves some type of uh, purpose. Amen. And it says, and of the knowledge of the Son of God to a perfect man, to the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. That we should no longer be children tossed to and fro and carried about with every wind of doctrine by the trickery of men. <laughs> you know, a lot of times 
we, we, we run around and we go to church services. We go to Bible studies. We, we, you know, we go on YouTube and we search for teachings and for preachings and for schools. And, and we travel to different cities, sometimes even different states, um, to attend conferences. And we are all about knowledge, all about learning. You know, we scroll down social media and, and, and we scroll down and, you know, a lot of us uh, follow those Christian pages that have the scriptures and have the teachings and the, the devotionals. And we scroll and we read reading and we just want knowledge. We want to learn more. We want to be reminded of more and more and more. But do we ever stop and wonder what is the purpose of it all? What are we going to do with this knowledge that we have? You know, are we using our, are we applying it? You know, are we, are we doing more serving, aka ministering with the more knowledge that we attain? Or are we just doing more talking about it? Or are we just feeling better about ourselves? Because there's going to come a time in our lives where we will pass away. And we will leave this mortal body and attain an immortal body. And we're going to know everything. In that time right before we pass away. It will be a horrible, very horrible thing to think, wow, I spent my whole life, if not most of my Christian life, most of my time as a born again believer, as a child of God, reading the Bible, reading books, attending uh, conferences and church services and the ones on Wednesdays too and the ones on Sunday nights too. And I got knowledge and knowledge and knowledge. And now I came to a the point where I'm actually going to know all the things that the Lord will allow me to know, you know, as somebody with a glorified body who's going to live forever with the Lord. And, and I just realized that I worked so hard to get knowledge that I basically never used. It's going to be horrible. You know, and I was just thinking about that. I don't know. How, how do you guys feel about that? Are you using the knowledge that you're getting? Because it takes time to read. It takes time to study. It takes a lot of money. To, to, to buy books, you know, I don't know if you guys can see some of the books I have there, but that's not even, you know, a, a small fraction of the books that I have. I have a lot of books and I spent thousands of dollars on books, you know, and I'm, 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 I'm sure a lot of you guys have as well. And it would be a shame if number one, we didn't read them. <laughs> um, and number two, it would be a shame if we read them, but never got a change of action, a change of plan in a more doing uh, of effective ministry throughout all the reading that we did. You know, it will be a shame. So I just want to encourage you guys and remind you guys, but, but at the same time, challenge you guys to, you know, put in the work, you know, with the equipment that we're getting, we're supposed to be doing serving. We're supposed to be serving, right? Serving like the Lord did, freely given what we have received. We are supposed to be letting our light shine and, and, and our good works be seen before men that they may glorify our Father in heaven. So, you know, do something with that knowledge you have. And then it says, so that we're not tossed to and fro by those weird and false doctrines, those things that are full of trickery and deceit that will lead us astray. You know, are we using the things that we read to get a clearer perspective and understanding of the gospel, of the new covenant, of the things that God wants for us and gave us? Are we, are we using it to get a clearer picture of the truth so that we're tricked less, right? Deceived less. It's, it, it, you know, a lot of times we're, we talk about Adam and Eve, but we ourselves are tricked and allow the, the, the enemy to deceive us every day. As if we didn't read Genesis a hundred times, as if we don't have the scriptures that they didn't have, <laughs> as if we don't have the Holy Spirit that they didn't have. You understand? So it's like, wow, we know that the enemy tricks and deceives people through false um, statements, through, you know, deceitful, cunning phrases and lies that sound good and smooth like honey, but at the end of the day, they're poison because they lead us away of the truth of God. And if we're getting so much knowledge, shouldn't we at least be getting, um, you know, stronger and better and not being deceived by the enemy, not being tricked by our own flesh and lustful desires? You know, shouldn't we, um, not even pay attention to a lot of these preachers and messages that are out there and that are on Christian TV and stuff? that are just so jacked up and so 
non-gospel that are just so not Jesus, so selfish and, and full of pride and, 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 and full of the lust of the flesh, you know, full of greed and love of money, you know, uh, shouldn't we even just grow and to grow to a place with all the knowledge that we have guys to a place where we're no longer paying attention to the lies no longer being tricked and no longer accepting or tolerating a lot of the stuff that we do accept and tolerate from our own minds from our own flesh from the enemy and just from the stuff and the preaching that we listen to amen so you know what are you doing with with your knowledge ask yourself that what are you doing with it what kind of knowledge is it? Why do you want it? And what are you doing with it? With the more knowledge that you get, are you doing more talking? Or are you more doing more doing, more serving, more ministering? Ask yourself that, okay? Are you doing more refusing and rejecting of lies, refusing and rejecting of false doctrine, refusing and rejecting of the trickery and the deceit of the enemy? Are you doing that? <laughs> We've got to ask ourselves that. What are we doing with our knowledge? Amen. Why are we being equipped as the saints? For what? For what type of work? It's for service, guys. It's to serve God. It's to serve each other. It's to serve even unbelievers with the truth. Okay? With the reality of the gospel. Right? With the truth of the Lord that they need to be born again, just like we were born again. Okay? All right? So... We should be doing more serving, guys. And, you know, that's all I was thinking about. I hope this helps you. And, uh, yeah, I hope you dig deep into the word and into some books and stuff. Um, but do it with a purpose. And, and I pray that that purpose is more than learning, that it's for serving. It's for doing. It's for changing the world around you. Bless you guys. Thank you for growing with me as I grow with God. Love you guys. I'll see you next time. Bless you.